see about this picture. I have way too many cords. That might look okay. It doesn't look good there. Okay. I gotta remember that when I sit over on my other monitor, it's uh, later. Okay, well, let's talk about all the toys I got now. So, as you may have watched in other streaming episodes, I gave up on my Mac. It just could not do it. So, it doesn't sound like Christmas music to me. Let's go look at that. Yeah, it is a holiday station. It's a different song. Okay, we will try this. It may not have liked being unplugged and plugged, so hang on a minute. It may not have liked being unplugged and plugged, so hang on a minute. Hmm. That USB is just, uh, Touchy. Test one, two. Okay. It could be that the power, let's see, video capture. I'm sorry. Um, so on my Alienware, it's a Dell computer. It's called Alienware, and it's an R10 because it's got an AMD chip in it. I'll turn it around for you. Maybe you can see it. I'm not sure why. Let's see what's going on. Maybe it's the cord. Let's see what's going on. Maybe it's the cord. You guys may be lucky tonight and not have to look at me. Ha 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 ha. Hey, Nick, you're here. How's the sound sound now? Hey, Nick, you're here. How's the sound sound now? I googled what was wrong with it, and uh, it has to do with the uh, video uh, Elgato Cam Link. 
it uh, can interfere and mess up your audio. Good, thank you, loud and clear. I'm not exactly sure why I can see my stream straight ahead. Hang on a minute. Oh, okay. That's because it's right behind there. Okay, so... For whatever reason, I do not have video. Let's see what I need to do. I don't know what I just unplugged. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Oh, that must be my joystick that I unplugged. Okay, you guys are being really nice. Just bear with me. So if I got my cam link turned on, you know what's going on? The camera went off. Well, I'll tell you, you got to be smarter than all this equipment. Now watch, it's going to be the wrong field of view. Okay, you got to be smarter than all this equipment. Now watch, it's going to be the wrong field of view. Still not on. So I'm using my GoPro. Still not on. So I'm using my GoPro. Still not on. I bought it because I was going to get my uh, glider license. I'm sorry. I was going to get my I'm glider add-on. Uh, and so I was going to use my GoPro to film all the lessons. But Okay, let's watch this and see what's going on. I need a camera on me. You guys would be laughing your butts off watching what I'm doing. I need a camera on me. You guys would be laughing your butts off watching what I'm doing. I just use my phone as a face cam. Oh, that's what you're using. Now, uh, you know, I'm trying to be too dang high tech. Now, uh, you know, I'm trying to be too dang high tech. I got all this fancy stuff now. That's why I got to start streaming. I got all this fancy stuff now. That's why I got to start streaming. Okay, still don't have... I'll have to research that uh, about how to use your. Yeah, because I could just mount my phone up in front of me and it would take care of it. Okay, the camera's on. The cam link's plugged in, and it's not plugged into a powered USB. I didn't know there were so darn many USBs. You know, there used to be the USB 2, now there's a 3.1 and a 3.2, and they can be powered or unpowered. And this computer's got more stuff on it than you can shake a stick at. Okay.
Hey Nick, is that music too loud? It just quit. Oh, it's going to another song. It just quit. Oh, it's going to another song. Okay, good. What are you using for your uh, OBS? I used stream, no, I mean, I used Twitch OBS in the beginning, but it didn't uh, offer enough uh, stuff, and then I switched to Streamlabs OBS, and it is, uh, it's fantastic to me, you got all these controls. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what I'm using, and so... Um, it may be that I need to um, video capture. I may need to get rid of it and start over. Let's try that and see what happens. Properties. Yeah. Uh, maybe this USB port in front is not going to work. Okay, so hold on a minute. Okay. Um, maybe if you can't plug and unplug all this stuff while you're got your computer running. seen my chat before and now it was there and now it's gone so video capture Uh-oh, it's back. 
Maybe I just needed to reset it. Oh. Now you guys can see me. That's scary. Look how big I am. Hey, now you can see my computer. That's that Alienware right there. Finally, I have a gaming computer. And over there, I got my Mac. So I'm using my Mac to monitor my screen. Now, I do know how to make this the right size, so let's watch me try to do that. Ooh. Put it right over there. And, of course, you can see my green screen behind me. I think I may just leave it like that for tonight. Otherwise, I'll never... I'll never uh, get... Uh, the rest of this stream going. <laughs> okay, so what happened to my... That chat. Look down here. Studio mode. Oh, I don't like that. Layout. that was the video card was causing that hum yeah okay, I still have to go back and figure out why in a minute a minute ago I could see my chat on Streamlabs OBS and now I can't If I save these changes, now I can, uh, it's interesting. Well, I wish I could see my chat if I could. Let me go, maybe I can. Okay. Sorry, say that again. Hey Nick, do you know where on this Streamlabs OBS that I'm looking at? I saw the chat, but now hey, it's Nick, gone. Do you know where on this Streamlabs OBS that I'm looking at? I saw the chat, but now it's gone. The problem was, is I, you know, 
I didn't realize you could see it right in front of you. Okay. Nick probably got smart and left. Still watching, Nick? Yeah, it's the light outside. Oh, I got my lights on. It's probably why I can do that. Cool view from up on top of the tail. the one I'm using. Turn down the airplane. How about the airplane noise? Can you hear it now? Okay, now I got the field of view correct. Okay. All I gotta do is uh, get rid of my green screen. Now I got the field of view correct. All I gotta do is uh, get rid of my green screen. Oh, 
come on, don't do that. Hey, Nick, you still here? It's one way to get rid of that sound. One way to get rid of that sound. Oh, if you move the camera over, you can get it in the center. What do you think? Oh, you move the camera over and get it in the center. Okay, I am still trying to replay buffer. No, I didn't. Okay, I am still Click to open your notifications to window. Buffer. No, I didn't. Nope. Click Not it. Settings. 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 Import widget file. Oh, wait a minute. Show the live on the left hand side. Oh, wait a minute. Show the live on the left hand side. Let's see if that actually worked. Let's see if that actually worked. Nope, I don't think so. I like that music. I like that music. Let's see, I was down in settings when I was confirm. No. Appearance, I, I think I was on. I was Show the dock. Appearance, I think Enable I was on. better TVV. Show the dock. Enable Franker Zero. I have no idea what that is. Double click okay, selected right group. Here. I have no idea what that is. Double click selected group. Double click selected group. So if that says show the live doc chat on the left, it must mean that the Well, if anything, you're getting Christmas music. <laughs> you may not get, you're not well, getting any airplanes flying or any of that Christmas stuff, but you're getting Christmas music. You may not get, you're not getting any airplanes. So this is going to be two hours of Christmas music. So this is going to be two hours of Christmas music. Sure would like to know where that screen went, that chat screen. Pop out event filtering options. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. I need it. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. 
Double click selected group, single click selected items. Alabaster Prime? Ooh, that's terrible. I like nighttime. Alabaster Prime. Except that lights me up good. That's terrible. I like nighttime. Alabaster. Okay. Show the good. live dock on the left side. Okay. Show the live dock on the left side. Well, let's see. I can probably go down and do something that I, uh... Well, let's see. I can probably go down and do something that I, uh... Webcam frames. Nope. Webcam frames. I got one here that is... For... I got one here that is... Chrome. Windows capture, that's fine. Windows Are you back, Nick? Are you back, Nick? Nick was smart. He left. Okay, I'm glad you're back. Hey, over on Streamlabs, a little bit ago, I saw my chat on the side okay, of, I'm you know, the... Hey, over on Streamlabs... Anyway, ago, it disappeared. Do you know how to get it back? On the side of, you know, the... Anyway, it disappeared. Do you know how to get it back? What I got to figure out is how you can talk to people without uh, doing the chat. What I got to figure out is how you can talk to people without uh, doing the chat. I, I, maybe you can do that on Discord. Anyway, I was fiddling with this, trying to get the camera to work and everything, and all of a sudden the chat showed up. On the right side of my uh, Streamlabs OBS box. And then it disappeared. Now I, I, I have no idea where it appeared from, and I don't know how to get it back. But I want to get it back. I have no idea where it appeared from, and I don't know how to get it back. But I want to get it back. Jingle Bell Rock. I need to turn off the lights. The pushback the guy had a fit when I... There it is.
it's about to go live. Oh, I'm about to go live anyway, so we'll figure it out when I go live. Okay, great. Thank you, bud. Okay, for those of you that might be hanging around to watch me fly this, uh... okay, for those so I showed you that I had the new computer, and it really, you know, it's, uh, it's like about an Intel 9, but it's an AMD, and I have 8 megabytes of RAM on the graphics card, so... It actually, uh, yeah, you can see down there in the corner, my, um, frame rate's about 25, but I've got X-Plane really turned up, so it's probably because it's nighttime that I'm getting less. Let's go, let me go up here and, uh, tweak that just a if I can get when I first turned this on, I had a frame rate of like 115. I may mess myself over. I know if you uh, start jacking with this graphic stuff. It will um, reset the sim. Yep, there it goes. Well, we'll see if it uh, gives me a better frame rate. Well, we'll see if it uh, gives me a better frame rate. Hey, I'm interested to see how, Nick, if you go live, you can communicate with me. Maybe I need to go over on your um, feed to see what how to do what we talked about. Maybe I need to go over on your feed to see what how to. Okay, what did I just do? Oh, my frame rate. Okay, Oh yeah, that did help it. It went up to my frame rate. Thirties and forties. Okay. Oh yeah, that did help it. It went up to. Okay, I just okay. tweaked uh, my graphics card down a little bit. Maybe nighttime causes okay, it to. Uh, my, my lights came back Maybe on. I don't think I had any lights on. I got my beacon on. Got logo lights on. Oh, that was it. It's a two position. Now I'm not blinding the guy. I really like the fact that, okay, I was talking about what I had. So I had my Dell Alienware R10. I got my grandkids' 43-inch uh, TCL TV and made it into a monitor. So I got this huge monitor. And then I got my iMac over there to the side. And um, so I can have a lot of real estate for... Uh, Okay, now the airplane that I'm using now is the Tolus Airbus 321. Okay. Now the airplane that I'm using now And the, the reason I gave it a try was I was hoping Airbus that it would have a better frame rate. 
and boy does it, like I said, when I first turned it on, it had like 115. So, let's see. So I don't need to listen to me. Now that I know that the uh, music's okay over there and my sound, I am sound okay. Oh, I guess I do. I want to test one thing. I want to test Linda. You know, I have an FO now. You want to go over and see her? She does a great job. I am fine. Thank you. All right, you can hear her. <laughs> okay. Like I said, you know, I have got overwhelmed by gimmicks, so. Like I said. I got a great paint job outside. Let me go show you. I don't know whether you can see it or not. I got a great paint job outside. Let's see, I gotta go view external chase. Let me get rid of this page. Now you really can't see it, but it's purdy. got green engines and it's got a falcon on the tail so so I don't know why I turned on the uh, let's go back in and see if I can figure that out I turned on the uh, so the navs and the logo Now, not going to work. There's probably a good reason for that. Let's have Linda start the APU and we'll... Uh, Let's have Linda start the APU and we'll... Uh, Engine start procedure. Have we missed before start checklist? Starting engine 2. We should have flashlight. Starting engine one. Oh, damn, she's starting the engines. I ought to be paying attention, I guess. Oh, damn, she's starting the engines. Hang on, let's go daytime so you can look at this. There it is. Okay, so let's go back to the correct time. Okay, so let's go back to the correct time. Here we Engine start procedure completed.
Well, she got the engine started for me. Okay, stand by a minute. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Ooh, zero foot. Zero feet per minute landing. Wow. Look at all that money going in my jar. I wish it was real. Look at all that money going in my jar. I wish it was real. Okay, stand by. I want to maybe uh, nix up. So let me go see if I can find out how to do this. At your point four, and your freezer at your four. And then looking at the approaches for I also look at the two. Three twenty-two. Yeah, no, that's not gonna cut. That's not that's not gonna cut it. Uh, need to go somewhere that has like a cap rig or something. I'm trying I don't look the wrong place in this assessment, but exact weather's that bad right now. I was wondering about this hearing. Hey, Ibris, what's up? I did, yeah, so. I'm not sure if you can see my. Um, yeah, 602 for Air Force. Uh, AI was saying. 602 for Air Force with um, an instrument approach, and then 802 for airports without an instrument approach. That's, that's one of the few things I learned from, uh, from ground school. Okay, so if I do, I turn off X-Plane, oops, not that. Um, turn off X-Plane, what? Yes, with Oprah's precision. With precision, okay, let's uh, go here and then turn on the big capture. See this little button up here? Yeah. Yeah. Go down see oh, it on I'm trying to get back to this game. Okay, four twenty four to the same frame. Let's see what it's looking like. I can see it fine. Come calm, this is going to be one of the quarter mile missed or the cast pipe there. Cruising rain, seeing the right to see on the end of the SRF. Utah, KSFO. Going 2014 miles for a bus. Weather's looking a little bit better at the same frame. Do I really want to go that far? Okay, I'm back. Oh, there's three people here now. Who's the new person? Well, you know, I'm just learning how to do all this and learning how to do all this. Okay, I went over to Nick's uh, stream, and he showed me that there's a little button I should push. Of course, I don't see that button. So I wonder what the problem is. Hang on, I'm gonna. If I put this full screen, what would it do? Okay, now the chat's on the left. Okay, now the chat's on the left. Remember when I did that and put it there? Remember when I did that and put it there? It was under appearance. Was under Show the dock on the left. Show the dock on the Okay. Now the dock's on the right. Okay. Now the dock's on the right. And I see that little thing up there. And I see that little thing up there. 
<laughs> what do you guys think? Is this informative or what? Okay, now I made the window smaller and it's not there. Okay. Like I said before, you gotta be smarter than the equipment. Like I said before, you gotta be smarter than the equipment. Which I'm not. Which I'm not. Except now we know where it is. Except now we know where it is. So, how can I get this where I want it? Okay, now it disappeared. Guys, that camera's still not doing what it's supposed to be in. Okay. What do you think? I just need to get rid of the chroma. I got a green screen, but you can see the green screen. It's not supposed to be that way. Okay, I put it on the left. Okay, I put it on the left. You know what I think I need to do? I need to read the book. You know what I think I need to do? They make this stuff so simple to use that you can use it without reading the manual. But then you run into these little problems like I'm running into now and you go... Okay, let's don't worry about that. Let's go back to the airplane. Okay, let's don't worry about that. Let's go back to the airplane. I'll look over here and if somebody uh, tries to uh, chat with me, I'll. So we are in San Diego. We are flying to Los Angeles. We got my trusty co-pilot here, Linda. And she's bored to death because I'm not doing nothing.
Let's talk to her. You want to know how old she is? Come on, mouse. I need a pad. How old are you, Linda? I am 27 years old. That's probably politically incorrect. Okay. So, I said before that I was using a Tolus 321. And the reason why is pretty simple. It has to do with the frame rate. The JAR design is not updated uh, to current standards, so it's a nice Airbus. I got the Flight Factors Airbus Ultimate. Boy, was that thing expensive, like 85 bucks. Of course, I spent more than that for this when I added the uh, upgrade and the co-pilot. But the Flight Factors Airbus 320 Ultimate is a frame hog. On my X-Plane, I'm sorry, on my iMac, uh, I was getting like 14 and you can't use VATSIM unless you got minimum of 25 so like I said I used boot camp I used parallels luckily I got my money back from parallels they were nice about that they gave it back to me I could not make it work on the Mac and I gave up and I ordered the Dell and I got the Dell Alienware R10 and uh, it's got 32 uh, gigabytes of RAM, and it's got a one tetrabyte SSD, which is really fast. And I bought a Samsung little SSD. They're really, can't believe how little they are. Anyway, I tried to load all that stuff on my Mac, and it, it worked a little better, but not good enough. And I wanted to be able to run Microsoft Flight Simulator, and... You know, nothing would run Microsoft Flight Simulator. That is the the way they've got that set up through Xbox is a real pain. It takes about three days to install it on your computer. That's how crazy it is. And I really like it. It's got this great graphics outside the airplane. I can't... Anyway, the airplanes aren't very good. They're not uh, like the Airbus. It half the... You know, I want an airplane that if I come down here to the systems page and I click bleeds, I want to see the bleeds or the air conditioning. And it wouldn't work, so I'm still going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to uh, experiment with um, whatever I was talking about. So I got the TOLUS. And it was like $75, and the Neo add-on, you know, I wanted to be able to put Leap engines and Sharklets, and anyway, so I spent another 30 bucks for that, and then uh, I thought, well, I'll try the Copilot, which is a really cool program, and, um, and then I also got the camera off of uh, xplane.org, and so... Now you can just jump all over the place and uh, you can look out the right window and look over the nose and you can look outside. That's a really cool view. And so that's up on top of the tail like, uh, you know, the Airbus 380 and some other airplanes. Maybe the Boeing 787 does that. They got a camera up there on the top of the tail. And so you can pick it on your seat back and watch it from way up there. So that's really cool. So this is X Camera 2.4. And it allows you to just jump all over the place without doing this. Whoa! <laughs> it goes back. So, And then down here on the side you see this writing. 
This is the, uh, this is the co-pilot stuff. So I'll put her off to the side. And then, um, and like I said, the X camera, you can just do all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go look at, uh, Ooh, how about the airport camera? So, that's looking west-southwest at Lindbergh, and uh, there we are right there. And the bay's over here in Point Loma. Anyway, that's pretty cool. And you can also, I don't know if the light's on in back or not. Let's see if I can uh, find that one. No, that's an overview of the cockpit. That's what it looks like from the jump seat. I wonder if you can do stuff like that. Oh, you can. It's great. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. So, I'm using the TOLUS. And the reason for that is the frame rate. And if you look over there in the lower left-hand corner by my tip jar, it's in the, around 50. And like I said, you need 25 to use VATSIM. Otherwise, the airplane won't keep up with the controller and they'll disconnect you. And it took me forever to get that to work, but I now have actually talked to them and got a radio check. And they said it was 5x5. Five we're going to implement that really soon. So, And, of course, I've got those other airplanes, the, the, the pocket rocket, and uh, I got that VTOL thing where you can take off and land straight up and uh, fly the, their electric motors, and they tilt. They're from 90 to 45 to, to zero. Um, it's like a helicopter short takeoff and landing or vertical takeoff and landing I uh, thank you for following Steve hey Steve 10163 glad to have you bud thank you I had uh, I was off for about a month and a half or so because I got uh, I got uh, wound up in equipment quagmire. <laughs> so now I got the equipment. Now I got the uh, so, and I got that cool camera, and I got Linda. So let's put Linda to work. She already started the engines. Let's look at those. Remember, they're about twenty forty. 60. So 20 and 1 is when they're running and about 400 degrees. But on this, uh, these bigger engines, they run a little hotter, it looks like, because they're almost 600 and uh, 68.2 on the N2. So I got the engines running. And, uh, oh, I wonder. Let's go down and look at this FMS again. Uh oh. Loom Cube just went bye bye. So I got this really cool little light that uh, shines on my face. So it's not so dark. Like I say, if I had my chroma key. I had trouble with my camera. I think I had it in the USB powered uh, outlet and it was interfering with my sound. So where was I? Sorry. Okay, another cool thing about this is uh, this airplane, Tolos, 
has this cool screen. You're going to see it in a minute. It's just got everything. I mean, you can... Uh, I put those Leap engines on it. It's a Neo. You can save uh, situations and go right to it so you don't have to do all those checklists. You can do the loading of it. See where the CGs are and get your zero fuel weight and what you're going to do, like flaps two, and uh, it gives you your V speeds and your trims. Down 1.1, is that right? Huh, okay. Does some ground service where you can uh, have external power, or, and it's got a pushback, and uh, you can open the doors. It does faults. Um, I produce enough faults on my own that I don't need need any help. It's got uh, sound, of course, joystick actions, and then general settings. So that uh, right there is really cool. What it, what you can do with the airplane. So that's where I got my V speeds. Let's go back to initialization. Oh, look, I've got, uh, I've saved those and now I can, uh, that means I'll be able to go back and get those flight plans. So second page of initialization. Trying to figure out why it won't. Uh... Okay, the perf page has the V speeds. I told you I got those off of that planning, and we're doing flaps two. Flex into 59. The rest of this is uh, it's going to climb at 250 and 0.7 unless you change it. That's managed. It's going to cruise at 318 knots or 0.72 Mach and uh, descend at uh, 306 or 0.68 Mach and then. Uh, Remember, if you put in the uh, data for the landing, air, uh, the weather, 2992, the temperature, you get this off here, and 250 at 5. And uh, we're shooting a cat two or three, so the radio altimeter minimums are 50 feet. We're going to land flaps full. And our approach speed is going to be 160, and our across the fence is 155. Now, this is a big airplane. I was reading the uh, stats on these suckers. And uh, the 321, of course, is a stretch 320. Um, when you get a type rating in the airplane, like I did, you're typed in a 318, a 319, a 20, and a 21. All you have to do to fly a different model of airplane is to go uh, to what they call differences training. So when I did my training in Miami, I the simulator was a 320. The airplanes we had at Independence Air were 319s. And the reason for that was we were flying them coast to coast. And back then, a 320, you couldn't fill it up with people and gas and fly coast to coast and have an alternate and 45 minute reserve. You couldn't do all that. So they bought a slightly smaller airplane. Anyway, these 321s, 
that's a stretch 320. I think there's 14 feet ahead of the wing and 8 feet behind the wing plugs. And then they decided, well, heck, let's stretch it more. Put bigger gas tanks in it. Better engines. Let's see how far it'll go. So now there's a 321 XLR, and it will go 4,700 miles. It's only 20... 400 miles to Hawaii, so you can go twice as far as that. You can go out there and back, I guess, on a tank of gas. So anyway, this is a 320 Neo long range. And uh, the way you can kind of tell that it's a long range airplane is if you go to fuel, it's got these tanks, extra tanks. So 5,150 gallons, I believe, is in the front. It's like they've uh, taken out some of the cargo and put fuel tanks in it. And there's 4,160 in the back. So that gives us a total fuel on board. Of, uh, started out at 50,000 pounds. And our gross takeoff weight right now, I mean our gross weight right now is 197,400. This is one, anyway, that's what I'm getting at is, is that's why these speeds are so high. You know, a regular Airbus comes down the final at about 130 and crosses the fence at about 125. And this one's going about 40 knots faster. So it's going to take more runway to get airborne and more. Uh... So anyway. Go back to that FMC. So there's the direct pages, progress page. We're going to, we're flying at 18,000 feet. The optimum is 32.7, and the max is 34.5 based on the weight and everything. And performance, we just talked about all that and all the, all of that, and then there's the initialization. And I'm trying to figure out why. Anyway, it doesn't want to go to the next page. Maybe there isn't a next page on this. And then, of course, you got your flight plan. And I've already put in runway 27. And I've put in the, uh, I think it's the Falco departure. Actually, let's go over. I think it's on my av tab. Nope. Let's put it in there, though. The Falco 1. It basically goes up along the coast up to Seal Beach. So, and uh, remember that we would uh, normally, matter of fact, let's do that right now. If we went to pilot view, and we went to plan and we scrolled through our route let me make that bigger and let's put it out here where we can see it so after you've inputted all this, then you get the charts out and you make sure they're right. So there's San Diego, and there's Coaster and Mappin, Lindsay Falk, to Seal Beach. And then I've already put in the ILS 25 left. So there's Hyundai, Lima, the runway, and the missed approach. And so you check all that before you blast off. So now we know that our flight plan is correct. Let's go over here and uh, Linda's impatient. She'd like to take off. Let's look at the systems again. The engines are running. The bleeds are set. Pressurization's getting ready to go. The electrics, it's on the engines. 
and the APU generator is still running. And I think Linda will probably shut that off. Hydraulics look good. The fuel definitely looks good. The APU is still running and we don't need it. We should have shut it off. There's the air conditioning. All the doors are shut. The wheel temperatures and pressures look good. The flight controls. She's going to have us do a flight control check. So. And if I hit takeoff configuration, which she would probably do, it would tell us what we need to do. So let's let her go through that and then we will uh, come back to it. So the next procedure that we need is, let's do the after start. After start procedure. Engine mode selector normal. I can listen to APU her. APU bleed off. APU off. Oh, there goes the APU. Spoilers armed. Rudder trim zero. Watch it shut down. Pitch trim set. Flaps two set. Please set flaps for takeoff position. Ecam status checked. After start procedure completed. After a start checklist. Anti ice. Ecam status. Pitch trim. Rudder trim. After start checklist completed. Okay, so let's get a push. I got a fancy plug in for that. Better push. Ground a cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. So you can see where we are and we're going to go back there on the taxiway so all I have to do is it's already set I really don't have to reset it again but uh, so we can look outside and watch that tow come up. Yep, Steve, a short hop from San Diego to L.A. When you go through all the procedures and all the checklists and everything else, it, a 30-minute uh, flight to L.A. takes, you know, two hours. <laughs> it's almost like a real flight. You know, you get out to the airplane and there's a lot that gets done before you... Uh, load up all the people and push back and actually okay, tackle them. Ready to connect. So they're going to connect. I like this uh, tug. It pushes back against the nose wheel and lifts the nose wheel off the ground. And you just have to be patient and... Uh, well, they, they do all that stuff. But I will let Linda take the brake off. So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Park brake release. Starting for start. Okay, here we go. Now sometimes the ground traffic stops for you and sometimes it runs right through you, so. Oh, here comes somebody. Let's see if he stops. Yeah, yeah, but not enough.
That's okay, it's a pretty good simulation. Man, I love that frame rate, almost 60. We could be talking to ATC with that kind of frame rate. And we will. I gotta learn to operate the this uh, these systems and stuff before I start uh, adding air traffic control to it. Now, if you know from my bio, I fly long haul, so an eight-hour flight would take ten hours. <laughs> yeah, yep. Actually, you know, we we have to be we had to be out at the airplane like forty-five minutes before departure. And we had to work our butts off to get everything done so that by the time they loaded the people up, we were ready to push back. And, you know, it's very important that you be on time. So, and I was a lot. I was a senior captain. I think I was number 10 out of 2,000. So, I was a check airman and a, what they call an IOE check airman instructor and stuff on an Airbus. No, I'm sorry, no. I did all that on the CRJ-200. Operation uh, complete. Set parking brake. Uh-oh, set the brake. Park brake set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. These are really, uh... It's kind of fun to do this stuff the right way. So again, if you try to do this, uh, these flight procedures and, you know, go through all the, what they call flows, those are those procedures you see her doing before we do checklists. Anyway, it takes a while. CRGs are well me mechanics hate them a lot. Oh, it's disconnected. I'm bypassed and has been removed. Hand signal on the right. Well, see you next time and have a safe flight. All right. Yeah, our guys took really. Uh, when I flew the CRJ, it was for Atlantic Coast Airlines in Washington D.C. And they took really good care of our planes. And we were the first United Express to actually fly the jet. Matter of fact, we bought our CRJs before United said we could fly them. Oh, look, he's got a, a uh, reflective vest on over there. Kind of hard to see, but... Uh... Okay, let's come back in and... Uh... See if we can get Linda to get us out of here. I hope we need to put that on the right page. Arc. So let's see what the next procedure is. The taxi procedure. Taxi procedure. Hey, lights. Taxi lights on. Predictive wind shear system auto. Transponder on. Auto brake maximum set. Cabin report receive. Takeoff config normal. Taxi For procedure completed. Somehow we missed the, uh, the signs, but I probably didn't do the right checklist. Okay, we're ready to taxi. Let's do the uh, checklist. Let's see if we did the app. checklist. Anti ice. We want the anti-ice off. Ecam 
status. We're looking at that ecam. Nothing's on there. No blues. Pitch trim. Let's see if it's set. One down. Rudder trim. Zero. After start checklist completed. Okay. I think we did the taxi. We we're down to the. Uh, so we'll call ground control and they'll say taxi to runway 27. So let's see if we can. Oh, I can have her take the brake off. Park brake release. Well, let's see if this little Hummer will taxi. Got to move my joystick over here. Don't need the joystick hardly at all. Of course, I'm a lazy pilot, and uh, let's see what these uh, outsides look like. Ooh, hey. that's kind of a cool view. I like this one up on the tail better. This is a custom map for San Diego. It's got quite a bit of stuff on it. I like this simulator also because uh, it's probably one of the most advanced for right now. And uh, matter of fact, they just came out with this airplane within the last couple weeks. Look at all them wind socks. Brakes work good. Now, for some reason, when I come up here, it uh, it won't. It, I can't get it to move. I'm not sure what. Uh, I'm not going to go over there. I'm going to stop right here. Okay. Let's do these procedures now. takeoff procedure gas T A R A stroke lights auto landing lights on before takeoff procedure completed all right so we're doing flows and then we're doing checklists so takeoff checklist flight controls well, let's look at that normally she uh, wants me to do those so let's look at that Okay, well, I, I know how to do flight controls. Let's look at the... Um, go to the flight control page and then check them. So, let's do the rudder. Let's do the elevators. You want to make sure both of them go up. 
and both of them go down. And the ailerons, the left side, left aileron goes up, the right one goes down. And just the opposite the other way. And you want to make sure all those actually do that. In training, they would uh, fail one of those and to see if the pilots were paying attention. Flight control is not checked. After start checklist is not completed. Okay, well I just checked it, honey. Let's see where I messed that up. Must be a procedure. Let's try that before takeoff procedure. Before takeoff procedure. Das T A R A. Strobe lights auto. Landing lights on. Before takeoff procedure completed. No, they don't have RTO, but Max Max Auto Brakes is for uh, RTO. So if you uh, pull that power back and start slamming on the brakes, it'll all take effect for you. Oh, you know, I think I know where I messed up now. We need to do before takeoff below the before line. Takeoff checklist below the line. Takeoff runway. Two seven. Confirm. Cabin crew. Advised. Takeoff. T A R A set. Engine mode selector. Set normal. Packs. We can off. take off with the packs on. Before takeoff checklist below the line completed. Okay. So we'd call the tower and tell them we're ready to go. Let's see if this baby will move. Oh, one thing I want to check is the, um, what have I got set? I don't. So we're going to climb up to 10,000. And the heading's going to be, uh, managed and the speed's going to be managed also. And we're flexing to... So our flex of 59 degrees is going to give us 85% power. That shows you that you don't need all that power to take off. That's what flexing is all about. To save the engines. Okay, they clear us for takeoff. So let's have her shut the brake off for me. I need a mouse pad. Well, heart brake set. Heart brake release. Okay, well, it ought to move then. Cleared for takeoff. Fly runway heading. For a proceed on course and climb to 10. See, it's doing that again. I gotta figure that out. For some reason, the brake is off. 
but the airplane doesn't want to move. I'm trying to think what I did. Um, See the brakes off, but it won't move. There it goes. It may be that it's, I got a keyboard um, break that's causing me to, um, Okay, flex power set. Thrust set. This little Hummer takes a lot of runway. One hundred knots. Check. And we're take uh runway turn off lights off. Taxi lights off. So we're thrust climb, open climb, it's on nav, and alt is armed.
Okay, so we're on our way up. Hey Steve, are you a real life pilot? Ooh, look outside. Let's do some of this fancy looking outside. Anybody in the back? Hmm, oh, it's empty. <laughs> There's a top of the tail view. And under the belly. I think we ought to go up to 18,000. And then we'll do a little checklist here. We'll have Lynn to help us out. Okay, there is no, um, after takeoff check. Well, that's good. Uh, Nick was on here before. He was down at Embry-Riddle in uh, Florida working on his instrument rating and his instructor got COVID so that was the end of that. So he went home to quarantine and he's staying home for Christmas. I guess he'll probably be going back in the spring. Are you going to get your ratings uh, general aviation wise or are you going to go to one of the uh, schools like Embry Riddle. There it goes, managed. Remember, if you uh, push the buttons in, it's managed flight. That's the computer fly it. If you pull the buttons out, that's selected and that's pilot selected. Uh, There's a top of climb just past Falco. 
So we're going to shoot the ILS 25 left. So let's get over here and uh, get the right airport and stuff. So we're going to shoot the ILS 25 left cat 23. Yeah, I did all my training. Well, I didn't do it all part 61 because I did it with a GI Bill, so I was flying. And I also taught at a 141 school, so. So after Seal Beach, we want to go to SNA, SNNAK. Let's see if we can put that in. SNA. S N N A K. Let's see, normally if you select the line select key, it will bring it uh, down into scratch pad, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen, so I'm trying to hook these together. Okay, it did it. Uh oh. Yeah, okay. And the problem move top of descent is reached. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, they'll let you do anything you want. No, I'll be lucky if I can finish this one. Oh, that's a nice view outside. Oh, we got to get our butts down. Matter of fact, the last time I did this, it was embarrassing, so we need to at least be at 5,000, so let's start that. And I already know I got a problem, so I better get those spoilers out. Transition level. Oh, you're right. No, we still, we never set it to standard, but we should have. So let's see what this thing's saying. 
We'll select the ILS on here. Let's make sure that's right. One oh nine nine. Let's see if that's right. Yep, one oh nine nine. That's good. Oh, cool. Look at all the airports. See how we're doing. Well, it's slowing to 250 for 10. I like that. Is there anything Linda's supposed to be doing? Yeah, well, I'll do the approach check. Approach checklist. Briefing. It's complete. Ecam status. Check. Seat belts. On. Barrel. Two nine nine two. QNH two nine nine two set. Minimum. Fifty feet. 50 set. Engine mode selector. Normal. Set normal. Approach checklist completed. Okay. Go over there and look at that again. So 5,000 to Gates. Okay. Through 10, ding the flight attendant. Looks like I'm gonna be at 5,000 right at the fix. I might make it this time. Oh, you think so? You don't, <laughs> you don't think I can do managed? You're probably right. I ought to pay attention to you. You know, on my last one, I uh, did that, and I was not stable and I uh, descended I was descending to try to get the glide slope from above and uh, I was going down about 6,000 feet a minute and I got down uh, into the trees on about a two mile final at LAX and uh, I don't know what happened I didn't crash there but I landed and it didn't work right and I ran off the end of the runway through the fence and across the road and almost ended up in the ocean. So I, I deleted that, uh, I deleted that uh, stream. Yeah, I know, you're right, you're right, you're right. If you plan it, if you, you know, start down correctly, you will, uh, you should be okay. But I'm, you're 6,500, so I'm, I'm in great shape. And it's showing that I'm going to be down right there, so...
I like this. It even shows your displacement off your course. 1.1 mile. All right. It's looking nice outside. So I got my localizer captured. Oh, there's my glide slope. Well, it's going to be both of them are going to want to come together. So we'll say we're cleared for the approach and we'll see what happens. Oh, you know what? I think I want to slow down. Boy, those engines are quiet. Oops, speed brakes are still out. Yeah, I don't want that. Linda, get those. Darn it. Okay, they're set. Well, I got down okay, but I sure didn't, uh, see, I gotta go down. Uh. I need to go back to my, uh, Now let's put the gear down. Approach phase activated. Thanks, honey. No, not that many flaps. Captured the localizer, but we're in trouble, aren't we? No, well, we shouldn't be that bad, but we are. I don't know that we can get that. You're right, let's do that vertical speed. Except I got in big trouble last time I did it. Let's don't do over 2,000 feet a minute. I don't know, maybe 3,000 feet a minute. Do 2,500. Ooh, you did an icy runway. That'd be fun. Gears down. Oh, what happened to my flaps? 2,500. Doesn't like that, does it? Two thousand. Well, you know, I think the best part of Valor is to hand fly this Hummer. At least I got auto throttles. Going too fast. Runway turn off lights on. Taxi lights take off. Oh, brother. I got it. Maybe. Okay. Gears down, flaps are full. Little low. Glide slope. Yeah, I see it. Hundred above. Rare and one hundred. Hope I don't have auto brakes, so fifty, forty. 
30, 20, retard, retard, 10, drive, retard, retard. Reverse green, ground spoilers. Sixty knots. Well, it wasn't pretty, but I didn't crash. <laughs> pretty shitty for a real airline pilot, you know it. <laughs> oh. Cleared to cross the other runway. Have no idea where I'm going on the airport, so. Hey, maybe we'll go over here where these big guys are in park. Maybe the Emirates guy will let us park by him. I don't know. We'll probably go down this alley and won't be won't be able to find a place to park. Now I see an empty jetway. Let's go over here. American wants to host Frontier. Now, if I just knew where the line was, I'd be in business. Hey, there's a CRJ. Wow, I got a line? I do have a line. Gate 47. I'm glad it's going slow. That's close enough. Okay. Let's find some checklists after landing. After landing checklist. Flaps. Zero. Attracted. Spoilers. Disarmed. I like that she does all that work. APU. Started. That yeah, even going to start the APU for me. Off. Predictive wind shear system. How'd you land on a nice runway? Tell me about that. Landing checklist completed. Parking checklist. APU bleed. Well, at least I didn't crash this time. But I should have taken I should have taken Steve's advice and used vertical speed back when he told me. That's called cockpit resource management. My camera went off because the battery went dead. There's something about this GoPro and the... The way I had it hooked up to the computer, it wouldn't work right, so... There's a battery, but that's not going to work either. Ah, you don't need to see me. 
X-Plane has real weather. Yeah, I got that. Takes all the METARs, weather data from all over, compiles it into your sim. Yeah, I use that. Oh, did you go up in the northeast or something and uh, land at one of those airports where it was snowing? That'd be kind of cool. Set. APU bleed off. Parking checklist is not completed. What happened? Okay, well, I wonder to st shut her down, but uh, they're still, yo, oh, they're still running. Thought we had an APU running. Oh well. Well, that was an interesting 2 hour and 13 minute stream. Thanks for joining me. Again, this is my Dell Alienware computer running uh, x 11 with a Tolus 321 with a Copilot, X camera, a little music, uh, live flies across the top with the uh, all the goodies and uh, I actually got to uh, oh an Anchorage huh? oh that's a 747 you were flying and you were landing in Anchorage in a snowstorm and that's how you slid off the runway <laughs> uh, did you use Mac what was the braking action or do you have any idea did the ATIS or anything say anything about the you know, braking action. And did you use max? Uh, did you use medium? Well, you know, you can use max brakes on landing too. Did you use auto brakes? Auto brakes too, but it was wind and the correction made me slide. Yeah, when you land, you know, that's the whole thing. I landed on some slick runways. But, yeah, you just have to, uh, the braking action's got to be reported uh, in the fully loaded freighter. Oh, brother. Did you see that video of the one that uh, where the load shifted over in Germany and they crashed? Did you see that video of that going in? That was scary. You do not want your cargo to break loose and go to the back of the airplane like happened to those guys. I can't remember the story whether they missed, whether they didn't hook up the cargo right or whether it broke. Hey, Linda, thanks for coming with me. This is my first flight with Linda, so I think we did pretty good. Maybe I can thank her. Let's see. You are welcome. <laughs> uh, that was great. I didn't see in Germany, but I saw, oh, Afghan somewhere in the Middle East. Yeah, the one in Germany. Go look that up. 
I don't, I'm not sure who the company was, but they took off from 747, and they had a load shift on rotation, and the airplane went straight up, stalled, and went straight in the ground. Yeah. If I was a pilot of a freighter, I'd be doing a deck walk too, man. You want to make, you don't, you can't afford to die. So anyway, well, this was a pretty good, uh, again, this is like my second flight in the Tolis and my uh, second landing without crashing. And um, my first time with uh, Linda. And uh, basically, I've done a couple flights with my X camera, so it's kind of uh, cool to look out the. Matter of fact, let's look out the window now. Oh, that's my window. Let's look out the wing. Let's look at the gear. You can't see anything in the dark. Outside. Let's look at the tail. Oh, I love it. Yes. Well, sure was nice of American to let us pull in here. Oh, that looks like that might be a uh, Embraer. That was the last airplane I flew. An Embraer 175 for Compass Airline. That's the airline I was working at when I retired. I got cut by the age 60 rule. And one month later, they changed it to 65. Only problem was, if you were retired, you had to go to the bottom of the seniority list and start over. And after being a captain for 20 years, I don't think I was going to be that. Do that. Kind of nice to look around. Oh, another thing I learned is uh, about that you can fly around the airport. I learned. I, I watched the guy over in uh, the UK fly his uh, fly his airplane. And uh, his name is Kino. So uh, search for a guy named Kino in the UK and watch his stream. So this is the key. The C on the keyboard allows you to uh, go free camera. And it's pretty cool. And I'm still learning how to use this X camera, but I watched his stream and learned. I learned about the Flight Alive thing up here on the top of my screen. I learned about this uh, C key for flying all uh, uh, all over the place, and uh, that got me. He was during his stream. He was uh, flopping around all over the outside, inside with views, and I wondered how he was doing it. Oh, I know it has to be get moved, but you got to be careful. Complacency kills, unfortunately. So, so this is X plane at LAX, and it's got a pretty good map on it. And if I had. Um, that sim on we could see airplanes landing and stuff so matter of fact i don't know whether i can turn it on now and uh x pilot yeah i think you gotta i gotta research that but Okay, well, again, thank you guys for, uh, in, uh, you're my, you're my second chat, Steve, so, I really appreciate you coming along and talking to me, and I'm gonna figure out how to see my chat window on my OBS here afterwards, but.
Okay, I'll get the extra life. Thank you. Oh well. Oh no, I have extra life. I had that. I don't think I've. I don't think I loaded it this time. Again, remember I went from my iMac to my Dell, and I'm still trying to put all the pieces together. But I do have X Life. Anyway, hey, thanks for showing up and uh, come back and see me again. I stream on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at eight o'clock, and uh, other times when I'm testing. So. As always, fly safely, and uh, good luck on that flight training you're going to do, and I'll talk to you later. Good night.